Welcome back, everybody. Today, I have Marguerite, better known as the girl with the keto body from Instagram. If you don't follow her, you should. Here we go. Thanks again so much for being here. I hope it's uh, not too awkward for you. <laughs> It'll be an experience. Thank you for having me. Of course. So I just wanted to have you on. I've been following you for a long time. I think maybe, I don't know, how long have you been doing it, uh, doing this Instagram? Has it been like two or three years, maybe? 2017. So just, just approaching four years now. Hmm. But you have been along my side for many years. <laughs> Your transformation's awesome. It, I mean, it really keeps me going, knowing that there's somebody else out there doing the day-to-day -day thing, because you post almost every single day. And it really makes a difference when there's a community out there that you can follow along with, and they're regular people. Because I'm regular people, so, I mean, that really means a lot to me, and that really... It, really does give you something to look forward to and to help keep you accountable. So when I see you out there walking every day, I still don't do it, but <laughs> <laughs> you're out there walking in those Canadian winters too. <laughs> I don't understand how you do that, but so uh, awesome. Bags under the boots and, and bundle up. Um, it helps being um, followed by thousands of people. Um that's what keeps me accountable. And if I don't do it, then, then I hear it. So uh, the community is, is the biggest support and seeing other people doing it as well um, just pushes you to get out there and, and do it. You're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for thousands of other people. So it's helpful um, having that community around you. Oh, definitely. How did you find keto? We'll just go ahead and start that conversation. <laughs> Yeah, so I have never struggled with weight. Um, I maintained a weight of 95 pounds to 105 pounds um, right up until I had my first baby. Um, I gained a lot of weight in my first pregnancy. I went from 105 to 191 pounds in the nine months. Um, prior to uh, getting pregnant, I was a heavy smoker. I drank a lot of Red Bull, wasn't living a, a healthy lifestyle, um, but incredibly tiny. Um, after my son was born, I really struggled with body image, um, and going from being somebody that was always incredibly petite to the, to the other side of it, where I was facing, uh, body image issues. Um, so I wanted something that was going to be sustainable for me, um, something that I could keep going with and, and see results quickly, um, I went into juicing. I started with juicing. So if you were following at the very, very beginning, that was kind of the first introduction to keto. So I did the cleanse and then I went into keto um, after a month of the, of the juicing and I've maintained keto ever since. Um, I definitely go off track sometimes. Um, I alter my, my keto lifestyle. Um, right now I'm following one meal a day and in that one meal a day, I am only eating keto foods. Is that that 75 day challenge thing that you're doing right now? Yes. <laughs> okay. I try to keep up with everything that's going on. And it's a little difficult sometimes to know exactly what somebody's doing, even if you follow them every day, because I follow like 6,000 people because I'm one of those people that I see somebody doing cool stuff. I want to follow them. And the downside of that is, is I, see a good amount of your stuff. I see just about everything I think you post because the way that the Instagram algorithm works, I believe. So the people that you like the most or, you know, you interact with the most, you typically show up first and then everybody else sort of trickles in after that. Um, but I don't necessarily watch every single one of your stories. Um, I know it's rude, right? <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, so I try to follow what's going on and I see you have like a countdown like day 17 of 75 and that's that's awesome. I love seeing that too. So I just was curious exactly what that was. Oh, 
I had gotten back into really good shape um, through the summer last year, had got back to my pre-pregnancy body, was incredibly satisfied with where I was at and was just about maintaining um, here in in Canada, especially in the province of Ontario. Um, anybody from Ontario can relate. We're, we're going through just absolute... I guess the best way to put it is hell. Um, we're we're basically prisoners are in our own province. Every day is something new. It's a new lockdown. We don't have gyms. We haven't had gyms in in almost a year. Um, everything in our lives has been taken from us. Uh, we're even at a point that we can be stopped on the road by police for just being outside walking or pulled over on the road for for driving our vehicle. Um, so it's, it's been really difficult, a really difficult winter, um, not having the escape of going to a gym in the cold month. And I went completely off track, um, continued to go off on track in January, February, got on the scale in March. And I had basically undone all of the results that I had achieved last year. Um, so to get back onto it, I said, I'm gonna hold myself accountable for 75 days. Um, so for the 75 days, going to do the strict keto, uh, 23 hour fasting in between my meals, um, five kilometers a day walking, uh, 10,000 steps a day, and just kind of sharing my day every day in a, in a, in a video so that everybody can see it and I can be held accountable um, and just try to get myself back to where I was. I am a, a, an incredibly motivated person and I've just lost it. And I it's just a lot to do with the, the COVID. Um, so this is just kind of my way of saying, get myself back at it. I also have accountability groups that I host every month where I lead 31 different women every single month. A lot of them continue over and over. Um, and I have to be able to show them that I'm doing what I'm telling them to do and holding them accountable to doing. Uh, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at. It's just a, a 75 day reset. It's not the 75 hard. It's a 75 becoming the best version of me again, and just getting back into that right mindset. That's amazing. I mean, it really is. I mean, being able to notice things about yourself, notice, okay, I'm off track because I think 2020 was a year that just about everybody was off track. Um, I know I went off the rails. I mean, I didn't stop doing keto, but things creep in. So, you know, going to fast food would creep in. Having carry out that wasn't necessarily keto would creep in. Um, you know, the day-to-day -day life maintained keto, but the weekends would come and we, well, let's go get Thai food. You know, that's all noodles. So that complete change in day-to-day -day life manifests itself differently, I guess, to most people. But I think being locked down, not really having anywhere to go, I think that hit a lot of people with food. I mean, I know it did me. I was on a good track prior because I had a, my own routine, you know, I've talked about this before, but I would get up, I would go to work, I would have my coffee, I wouldn't eat until I got home making dinner for the family, have the same food that they were eating. So we were all more accountable. And then with the lockdown, I didn't have anywhere to go. I was working from home. So I would get up in the morning, walk into my office. And then if I felt like it, I could go downstairs and dig through the fridge. So that was easy to kind of defend off the first couple of weeks, but you know, you get bored, you get that, you know, I'm not leaving the house except maybe to go to Walmart. I'm not leaving the house except maybe to go pick up some N95 masks. I know we did that like, cause we were terrified like everybody else. And my, my wife is a, an RN. So that was even more so for us because she was right in the thick of everything. And we were worried about, you know, how, what is she going to come in contact with? So, you kind of like start eating your feelings, you know? Yeah. Um, and I know it's not just me. I know it's not just you. I know it's just about everybody out there went through that. So I think hopefully now we're able to kind of come out of that. I know that you guys are in like that perpetual lockdown. We talked about that the other day. 
and direct message and about how like I didn't know they could just pull you over for going somewhere. I mean, that's crazy to me. But I mean, I know that there's vast differences between Canada and the States, but I hope that what they're doing is beneficial on the on the grand scheme of like it's hopefully it's helping the situation and um because i know like here they've ended our mask mandate but stores can still enforce their own so it would be trespassing if they asked you to put a mask on and you said no and they'd ask you to leave so then they could charge you with trespassing and that kind of stuff but um at the end of next week i'm going down to texas for a wedding so i mean that's a thing <laughs> and <laughs> but my sister's getting married, so I really can't not go, I guess. So we'll do that. But that'll be interesting being on a plane. Um all the things down there. I know Texas is kind of like wide open now, so yes. Yes. I guess it. I guess we'll see. <laughs> well, congratulations to your sister. That's exciting. It'll be fun. Yeah. I don't see them very often. I mean, they live in Texas, so I mean, they have for a really long time. So, so you say you hold that accountability group. What made you decide to start that? I mean, was that just mainly for your own accountability? Um, um, I get a lot of messages to do one on one with people. Um, and, and work with people one on one and share meal plans and all of these things that I, I just don't have the time to do. Um, and I don't have meal plans. And, and as anybody that knows that follows me, I'm very sporadic about what I eat. I usually decide the morning of what I'm going to eat. Um, I don't plan out my meals a week in advance. Um, so the amount of messages that I was getting to do this, it was it was an immense amount of messages. So I decided to do the accountability group um, where I could hold a, a group of women um, accountable at one time um, to what their what their goals are. Um, it doesn't cost anything. Um, I check in with them every day and we all just keep making daily posts um, and we have certain goals that we're gonna do each week. Um, and every day we all have to make that post showing that we've hit all of those goals. And if you don't uh, hit the goals and you're eliminated from the group. Um, and then the, the ladies that get to the end, get to the end. The majority of the women do carry over. So a lot of them go back to November. Um, but it's just a way of keeping everybody on track, sharing meal ideas, um, and just implementing what's worked for me on keto. Um, I've had incredible results just doing keto one meal a day and walking um, and I showed that last year that I completely transformed my entire body not with weights not with gyms not with running not with doing anything intensive but just simply getting out and walking five kilometers every day and maintaining that lifestyle um, and drinking I drink a lot of water five liters of water a day and the girls have to show that they're drinking that amount of water um, or th they do three liters a day but they show on a on a time lapse video that that's what they're doing and um, but these these women have all become good friends um, we all have multiple group chats um, and it is helping me now with my accountability as well but it was just a lot of people asking for my help I also wouldn't consider myself to be a professional and I don't want my my keto account to be a place where I'm promoting sales or groups or or payment that's not what I want from my my account um I want my account to be just a really real account that you come to and know that if I'm talking about a product or I'm talking about an accountability uh group it's it's just because I want to do it. I want to be a part of it. And I, and I, and I love the product, not because I gain anything from it. So um, that's how I'll always keep this account. If I become incredibly famous one day, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll have a, a different uh, view on that. But for right now, I just want to keep it as real as possible and relatable as possible to, to everybody that follows me. That's how I look at it. I like trying new products. 
And I probably wouldn't be against people sending me stuff to try as long as I had the freedom to be open and honest about it. Because if you've watched any of our review videos, my wife does them with me and she is more than honest about things she doesn't like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that's one thing you would have to take into account with us is if we're going to try something, if you want us to make a video about it or we post about it on Instagram, if I don't like something, I'm probably if I buy something and I don't make a video about it and I don't like it, I don't post about it unless it's really, really bad and expensive or something like that, that I went out of my way to buy. But almost I, I mean, just about everything that I've ever posted about has been paid for by us. Um, I think a company LMNT sent us. Um, some of their new flavors one time to try. Oh, they're um, salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How were they? Well, there was like a it was like a habanero lemonade, and um, it was a chocolate and some kind of like mango chili or I forget what the, there was three flavors. We tried the habanero one, and it was just like the weirdest thing because it's like you want you want it to be refreshing, and it just was like spicy, and I'm like, that's not refreshing. It's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And I mean, like, I made a video about that flavor. I still kind of need to go back there. It's in my pantry. I have the chocolate. The idea of drinking, like, a salty chocolate water doesn't sound appealing to me. Right. But maybe put it on, like, a meat, like a steak. Like, the chocolate salt on a steak. That would probably complement. I don't know. It's like a 1,000 milligrams in a packet of sodium. So, I mean, that's a lot. You have to be, like, put in a shaker or something. I did reach out to them the other day. Uh, to their uh, people uh, on Instagram because they posted a new, like a new flavor watermelon. Oh. And I was like, where's the grape? Why don't you have grape? Grape would be good. I want grape. Cause that was always the go-to. Like when, when Gatorade put out the zero, I was like, all right, well, where's the grape? <laughs> then they finally did put out grape, <laughs> but that's one thing. Like, I think that's a different, like being a male account I don't have as many followers as most of the females. I mean, I'm also not like, I don't know, like I'm more food oriented. I don't really show myself at all too often. Right. Because I mean, I don't have a lot of before pictures. I was one of those people that, you know, I'm gross. Don't take my picture. Yeah. And so that kind of inhibits you when you go through like a weight loss journey. And now like, you know, you were... 400 plus, and now you're in, you know, three to 200 range and you want to show that off. Well, I don't have a lot of pictures. And I knew going into it, I was like, I should probably take some pictures. Well, I'll do that tomorrow. Well, tomorrow never came. And I don't have like, I don't have people reaching out to me all the time. I don't have people really asking me questions too much. So that's kind of nice, I guess, which is kind of weird. I mean, I, I mean, I've got 4,000 Instagram followers and that's primarily where I post outside of YouTube, but and I mean, I imagine that may change. It may not. Maybe because we are honest on YouTube and we don't sugarcoat stuff, I guess. But I mean, I I don't know. Um, I mean, do you get a lot of offers for product placement or you just turn them down or? Um, I get a lot of requests for products, but it has nothing to do with what I'm doing. Um my followers don't really respond to that. They don't, you can see the engagement. You can see what people will engage with, what people like on my page. Um, my followers don't have any interest in a lot of things that people are offering uh, to send me. Um, I wouldn't say get an immense amount. I, I see other women that I follow that have a lot less followers than I do. Um, and they're getting a lot more items. But I, I guess maybe these companies want like that that's the the image they're giving off i don't really give off that image i don't think my page is really about befores and afters um majority of my posts are all before and after photos and then just how to keep it as basic as possible and get the results that you want um and to your point about you there's there isn't a lot of men fall or men accounts that i follow i probably engage with five or six accounts that are males um and it's your your page is incredibly inspiring especially when you do these extended fasts that you just blow my mind when you <laughs> come them um but it's harder for me to relate to a man it's harder for me to see your results versus my results um whereas 
in a woman, I can see the the insecurities that I have, um, and I can see them achieving the results where I can't see that and I can't connect on that level with a, with a man that I follow. But your page for me and the reason that I've continued to follow you is you, you're incredibly real. Um, anytime I've had a bad day, you've sent me a quick DM. Um, you've never crossed a line or, or ever been inappropriate with any messages. It's always been fully supportive and you don't get that a lot from the male following. Um, and, and your recipes and things that you post are just, they're, they're easy. Um, they're things that you can do. Uh, highly motivating page. But I think that women do have more followers because women are more insecure and there's more women dominating that because we face body image issues, I think, more than the than men. Um, so I think that's why you see so many more women with so many more followers because we all are kind of in that in that category where we're struggling with that. And then our demographic, our age, we go back to the 90s and that's kind of like where we grew up was the 80s, 90s, um, some of the 70s and thin was the only way. Like you had to be pin thin and you remember Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie and everybody just being literally like a golf club. Turns like that heroin chic look. Yeah, and, and now they're saying, no, curvy, large butts, um, have shape to you. But that wasn't there in our time. Um, so we're constantly facing body image issues. Had we seen that back in, when we were growing up, it might be more normal. So I think that this generation, people from 30 to 50, are really struggling with body image because we've been told one thing, now it's another thing. So, so what is the right thing? Because like one of the things when I look at the demographics, so like I don't really have a way to like gauge Instagram because it doesn't have the analytics the same way that YouTube does. But when I go and dig into the analytics of the YouTube, like I can look at who's watching my videos and like 75% of the people who watch my videos are like 50 years old, 50 year old women. Right. It's And I mean, it kind of throws me off too because I'm like, I'm a 41 year old dude. And then like older women watch me. And then the same thing with like Instagram. I mean, I know that I'm not, I guess I'm different than a lot because I'm not like a gym rat. And I see like some of the people that I do follow are like in the gym all the time, um, kind of showcasing that. Um, and that's not me. I'm never going to have a six pack. I used to joke when I started keto, I would tell my wife, cause like I had a uh, hernia surgery before we, like right as we were starting keto and low carb and everything. And, and I didn't know how it worked. And I remember, and she'll make fun of me for this, but because I had like the hernia mesh under under everything. And I was like, well, if I do get like six pack abs, will the mesh show? And I thought she was going to die laughing at me. <laughs> I literally thought she was going to keel over. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that like how thick like the body is like, it's like the skin on your stomach is like, even if you're like thin is like this thick i don't know that stuff you know and she's laughed at me so hard so i mean that's one thing like i see like so many negative comments out there and the only reason i do like the instagram is to showcase what i'm doing maybe inspire other people um along the way doing that and to be inspired so i mean and to see like what other people are eating and what they're doing I mean, that's really the end all be all out of it. I mean, I didn't go into it to have any kind of relationships or to hit on girls or anything like that. I mean, I mean, that just doesn't, I don't know, but you know, I mean, it's to me, like, like the community means more to me than that. I mean, and I know that it's a weird place out there, the internet. So I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't be who I am without it. So, right, it's a it's a really great community to be a part of. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it. Um, there's going to always be the negative, um, but it's as simple as a quick block. Um, and I would say that the the positives definitely outweigh the negatives. Um, but it's a really strong strong community, and a lot of support, and a lot of people just really rooting you on. Um, I, it, it's funny because my, my personal life, I don't even get the support that I get from, from strangers. I get more 
uh, feedback from strangers, more like way to go, or you got this from people I've never met that are in Australia and Africa and the United States and just all over the world. And if I posted the same photo on my personal, I wouldn't get that same feedback. So it's, it's really interesting to just be surrounded by people that don't even know you, but just want everything the best for you, um, that check in on you. Um, and when you're, when you're down or you're not posting, they're, they're right there. What's going on? Let's get you back on track. Uh, it's, it's an amazing community. And I mean, to be fair, I think when it comes to like personal friends, like people on your personal page, and I think they're kind of too close to you to notice that kind of stuff. Because I don't even post that kind of stuff too much on my on my personal Facebook page or anything like that. Um, for the long for a long time, I didn't even have like face my my keto uh, Instagram posting cross posting to to Facebook because I mean. Why? I mean, they didn't. I mean, nobody cared, and it's right. not that they don't care. But I mean, I figure if they wanted to see what I was making on Instagram, they'd follow me on Instagram, and they probably do. But <laughs> and it's, I mean, and it's not like you don't like. It's not like that. I don't get like support from people that I know, because most people who reach out to me for help aren't strangers. I don't get a lot of strangers coming to my DMs asking me for help. Well, you know, what do you do? How did you get here? What is, you know, every once in a while I may get a comment on my video, on a, on a photo or a video, like, you know, what was the recipe for this or whatever, but I don't get a lot of personal messages or DMs very much. Right. Um, but most of the people who reach out to me for help are actually, you know, like personal people. So people that I know in real life that will come to me and go, you know, I've seen your progress. I got diagnosed with this or I'm having this issue, you know, what can we do? I mean, even with like my brother, my brother got uh, diagnosed with fatty liver. Um, and he was like, well, how do we? I was like, dude, we can fix this. That's the easy thing. We can fix it. And we did. Right. Um, so I think that's where most of, you know, most of that comes from for me. But so, I mean, I'm kind of like an outlier, I guess, too, but I don't know. <laughs> I think that this is the the people in my personal life they they just don't know enough about it, not as passionate about it as as my following. So that's probably why I have that support from the following where I, I may not in my personal life. Like everybody would be like, good job. Um but I've also strayed away from posting it in my personal accounts and I just keep it to the people that want to follow. That being said, um I have five people that I personally know that I allow on this account. Um, uh, I don't, I don't publicly announce this account to any of my friends, um, any of my coworkers, um, nobody from my personal account except for five people follow my, my keto account, nor do they know about it. It's something I keep pretty private. Um, and it's just because I don't, don't know that I'm comfortable yet with, certain people to seeing my results, the types of posts I make. Um, I, I'm very transparent in the posts that I make and I'm very, I really show the results that I get. Um, and maybe I just don't want those pictures accessed by, by personal friends. Um, yeah. And like to, to date, my, my keto account is fully locked down. I screen every single follower that comes in and I will cross reference it as well to make sure that there is no, there's no connection there. I don't know that I'll ever be comfortable like going to a public account and letting anybody follow me. I'm just not, I'm just not there yet. So I'm okay with strangers. Um, haven't opened it up to my personal life though. I mean, that's pretty awesome though. I mean, that, I mean, I never even thought to do that. I guess that's, that, I mean, that really is honestly, I guess, the difference between like, like the kind of interactions like a, a guy will have and a, the kind of interactions a female will have. And then also, like, like, you know, we talked about is I'm not posting necessarily pictures of myself very often. And even when I do, it's like, I was, I don't know, like, where, you know, I'm not like, like me pick, taking a picture at work from the, like the work bathroom at a big mirror. So was able to get a full body shot or, you know, a picture that was taken to me, you know, five, six years ago or whatever. Um, so, I mean, I never really thought to lock it down, I guess. I mean, it makes a lot of sense and having that control would probably be pretty good. Cause I mean, I went and Google myself the other day. I got to do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Well, I'm like, so like when I Googled myself, so like my name is easily accessed. There's like a couple of weird things. Like there's not a lot of me people like my first and last name out there. But there's like in the middle of Texas, there's like a street, like a little subdivision street that has the exact same name as me. First and last. And I'm like, that is so strange. And then I found that comedian. It's in Arizona. Yeah, you were saying. <laughs> but like, that's like, he's using his middle name as his last name. So. Okay. That was like, cause there's only like seven people as far as the last time I actually checked, checked only like seven people out there with the same name as me. So yeah. So I was just blown away by that. Like, I don't know. And then my wife's really uh, reserved. She doesn't like, that's why she doesn't get on camera when we do video. She sits off to the side. Um, I joke with her about it. I'm like, we're going to get you on there one of these days. But I mean, as long as she's doing videos with me and it's fun and we can crack jokes and be silly, that's all I want. Because she, you know, she makes it so much more fun for me than sitting and looking at the camera and just talking about something. Because then it's harder for me to like joke and be more personable, I think, without her. I can do it, but she makes it more fun. Or she's important. You want to have fun. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we've got a couple like tomorrow and Friday, we've got a couple videos coming out um, with just the two of us trying out stuff. And I think Monday, I've got Monday out there. So I need to make more videos so I can get them all posted for next week and the week after since I'll be in Texas the week after that. So I don't have to worry about posting videos when I'm out of town. So good for you. I'm proud of you. You're doing um and you're you're expanding into different channels. I don't know that I would have the, the same courage to do that, but um I think it'll it'll get your name out there and we'll see what you're doing. Um I think your account's great. So uh, I don't I don't think I would follow you anymore if you had befores and afters, because for me, it's just not relatable. But what you post is relatable. The things that you drink, the things that you eat, um, that's all incredibly relatable. And just knowing that you're supportive, you're constantly supportive. You may not like every single post I post, um, but who can? I, I post three or four times a day. Um, but you've always been incredibly supportive throughout my entire journey. I think you followed me from almost the get-go. Um, and what you do is incredible as well. So I was thinking about that. I was like, this is like the second time I think was, I was thinking about this is like the second time that you've like transformed yourself, right? Cause did you do it with the first baby and then the second baby too? This is the third time. So third I time. Okay. I uh, got pregnant uh, with my second. Um, with my second, I had a severe hyperemesis. Um, so I was in the hospital for four months oh, uh, goodness. on a feeding tube for, for that pregnancy with a pick line in my arm uh, for the entire nine months. And I was in bed. Um, I had 3,000 calories pumped into my body every day uh, through TPN and bed rest. So that just led to to weight gain. Um, so had that baby. And then at five months postpartum, um, when I was able to supplement breastfeeding, I did the transformation again. And then I went off track this winter and I'm back to where I started again. Um, my body is nowhere close to what it was before, but the weight on the scale reflects differently. Um, so I don't think I've completely ruined my progress, um, but I, I did gain the weight back and lived unhealthily for for months and um, just a really hard time with, with COVID and just not knowing every day what's happening in your province and school shutting down and becoming a mom of a, a new baby and then a, a teacher full time and then trying to maintain a job and, and be a wife and lead a community that um, lets me know that I'm, I'm why they keep going. So just to let that go is really difficult as well. Um, so it's it's been an adjustment, but this is my third transformation, and I'm I'm, in, I'm going for ten. I think ten. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we all go off track, and I think it's it's really important to share that. Um, and if people don't like that, then they can unfollow me. But I feel like people relate to that that you do go off track, um, and it's okay, and you you can lose all your progress, and you can get it back. It just takes time. 
and, and I'm trying to show that right now. Um, my main focus in the next 75 days for my followers is everybody really focuses on the scale, 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 and what the number is on the scale. And I've made a few posts recently where I show my weight uh, last year is the same as it is this year, but the difference in what my body looks like is is night and day. Um, so right now, every day I am sharing my weight. I'm getting on the scale and I'm showing people that it doesn't matter what your weight is showing. And I'm going to show it at the end of the 75 days that that scale is not going to really move. But the transformation in my body in 75 days is going to be amazing. Um, and I think it's really important to focus on that because everybody is so focused in on what the scale says and that that's their progress, uh, including myself. I, I beat myself up over the scale, but the scale is nothing. So I'm kind of glad that I went off track um, because it's giving me the opportunity to show people that it's not all about the scale, um, that you can get it back um, and not just to give up on yourself and go off track for years. Um, even if you go off for a few months, you can still, you can still get it back. Of, of course, like that's one of the hardest things that I know or I've noticed interacting with people in like Facebook groups and such is the scale. I've been doing this, you know, like for two weeks, I lost five pounds a week. And then this week I only lost one pound. Well, you lost a pound. That's great. Congratulations. You're doing what you should be doing. And I mean, like our scale sucks. And I don't want to go buy a nice one because I don't want to be like on it every day. Right. Like ours, I can get on it five times and it'll give me five different numbers. So I'm okay with that. Like it gives me like a ballpark. So I'm okay with that. Like it's a ballpark number. I don't really need to know what I'm weighing. Like, cause it'll be like five, 10 pounds difference. I'm like, well, I'm still in this area. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm, you know, trending downward or whatever the case is. And one of the things like, like with Twitter on my Twitter, like I have a pen tweet and it's like, the, the number on the scale, like I'll paraphrase because I can't remember exactly what it says, but it's like basically the numbers on the scale don't always show your progress. I think people get so hung up on those numbers, but they're not looking at like, well, my shirt fits better today. I'm in a better, I've, I've been in a better mood for three weeks and I've been in a long time or, you know, I've been sleeping better or my mental clarity is through the roof. I'm not exhausted every day when the, when the end of the day comes or. You know, like we went to X theme park and I went all around it and I wasn't dead tired halfway through. I didn't have to sit down halfway through, yeah. you know, those things are so huge. And I think they always take a back seat to what the scale says, you know, yeah. and just making sure that people understand that is one of the biggest things like, and I don't even really showcase that on my own page or anything like that because I kind of out of sight out of mind a little bit because I don't weigh myself every day but I mean I know like before keto like we went to the fair like our our state fair and I remember every time we saw a bench I sat down yeah and you know my wife was like come on we've got a lot of stuff to do I'm like oh, I can't you know and then fast forward you know, we went to Disney, just she and I in 2018, just the two of us. And one day we hit three parks. Wow. I had like 20. I think my, I think my, my, my watch was off because it only said I had 25,000 steps. I think that was way off because <laughs> we walked, we went through Epcot. We went through Animal Kingdom. We went through Hollywood Studios and walked through like three resort hotels. Like, and just the walking from the bus to the train to the, oh, that was crazy. And I wasn't even like, at the end of the day, we hopped on the monorail and went and had like a, like a midnight snack over at one of the hotels in the bar. For you. You know what I mean? That's like, that's, that to me is the selling point of a lifestyle shift like that keto can bring. You know, it's not that I, you can lose 150 pounds. It's not, you know the physical that all comes, you know, that'll all come. But like, I think I said last podcast or the podcast before I was like, you know, you come for the weight loss, you stay for everything else. So. 
Yeah, it's it's a sustainable lifestyle, um, and it's just getting more and more sustainable um, as it evolves. There's there's a lot more options, a lot more companies. Um, you can get really great quality items now um, to make it sustainable instead of having a, a cheat night. Um, there is so many, like you said, non-scale victories. Um, and I just hope that in the 75 days, even if I can just teach one person that follows me that the scale is really irrelevant, um, that's good. That's helpful. And, and I'm showing every day, like one this morning, I was 163. Yesterday, I was 168. Um, tomorrow, I could be 180. It just, it, just it, it fluctuates so much and it can fluctuate in a minute, literally in a minute. I could get on and then go get my camera to take a video and it's a different weight by the time I get back on in a minute. Um, so just... People need to get away from the from the scale, um, but keto is, like you said, provides clarity, better sleep, lots of energy. Uh, my skin is amazing since starting keto. Um, I can go, 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 go. Like you had just said, I don't get tired. Um, there, there's so many other benefits to keto. Uh, and I've recently just had like my blood work done before I went off track this last time and everything was perfect. Like there's nothing out of line. Uh, so the people that are against keto and, and say that it's not good for you, I, I beg to differ on that. Um, I think it's an excellent, excellent lifestyle. If it's a lifestyle that you want, if you don't want it, then I guess just avoid it. I'm curious to know, I'm curious, like how like Canadian doctors versus, you know, doctors here in the States because the last time I went and had my blood work done, it was over the phone. You know, I went in, had my blood drawn. I would go into our office and have the blood drawn. And it was like a ghost town. They had stuff boarded up and all that stuff. And, um, to talk with a doctor and she's sitting there going, well, your blood work, was, she was still concerned about a couple of items on my blood work. But if you looked at like year over year, everything was getting better year over year. And, like everything was in like the pretty much normal range. There was a couple of things like right on the edge of normal and whatnot. But I, she was like trying to tell me, well, you don't need to eat so much red meat. Maybe have a day or two where you don't eat red meat. I'm like, that's my primary diet is red meat. Like beef and eggs is what I eat most of the time, you know? So I was like, I eat red meat every day and my numbers aren't good. And then like, they're just so ingrained in the States anyway. Well, you probably should have a day or two without red meat. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know how they are and how they, how they handle like the ketogenic stuff in Canada, but. Uh, my doctor is fully against the ketogenic lifestyle and doesn't think it's, it's safe. And um, I went and seen a, a dietitian um, and had her kind of monitoring everything that I was doing, um, engaging things and helping me with my macros and making sure I was getting everything in. But I, I feel like doctors in Canada are not any different than there on their opinion of it. Uh, same thing with the red meat. There was that month, uh, I think it was August, that I just ate carnivore for the month. Um, it was red meat every single night. I had steaks every single night. I think I maybe did chicken once. Um, and my doctor's like, oh, no, no, no. Like, you need to do that maybe once or twice a week. That's really bad for you. So I think they're pretty in line with the, the states. And I just think that people aren't educated enough on it. Um, and just hear that we're cutting out carbs and and how drastic it can be, but they don't really know they don't really know anything about it. So they're just judging it based on an opinion and not any facts. And um, keto's proven to work. It's helped a lot of people. Um, diabetics from from a, like a type two diabetes. I've seen people come out of type two diabetes. I haven't seen it with type one as of yet, um, but I have personally seen people with type two diabetes beat type two diabetes from keto. Uh, people with seizures, I've seen that stop. Um, so you, you do see amazing stories from the keto lifestyle. Of course. Yeah. I mean, that's the big thing. Like because when I was first doing the research for the ketogenic diet, while well, I was researching like recipes moreover than just researching the diet itself, looking for low carb recipes, soups and different things that we could eat when we were starting out in 2016. And that's where like I kept seeing keto, keto, keto. I'm like, well, what is this? And so I did a little more research, found podcasts. And I mean, here we are five years later, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was a rabbit hole. It was a five-year rabbit hole. 
<laughs> but I was like, you know, like I said too, like, you know, I see a lot of people when people come to me and they'll say things like, well, I want to do this until I hit this weight goal and then I'm going to stop. Right. So that's one thing that I was like, well, you probably don't want to, but you also want them to try it, maybe see the results. Maybe hopefully they'll stick around when they realize that they feel better. Like just like the, the no joint pain is like, that's like a, that seals the deal right there. Like I was 35 or how, how old I, oh, I'm 41 now. So five, whatever five years ago was, I'm not good at math, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'll be 42 in June, but. So then I'll have all the answers and know all the things, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think just knowing that, like, well, I mean, back then, like when I started, I was like taking like ibuprofen every day and Benadryl every day and taking um, a Meprazole, which is like Prilosec OTC, okay, uh, for heartburn and all that stuff. Like I couldn't go without that; I'd be a miserable mess. So, like, being able to walk away from all that, no joint pain, weight loss, the, I mean, it stacks up. Like, the case for keto just stacks up. So, I mean, if you can try it and you can sustain it, I know that it's not going to work for everybody because not necessarily that it probably doesn't work with them, but it's just not going to work with them, I guess. But, right. It's it's a hard it's a hard lifestyle for people to get their their heads around. Um, I'm the only one that does keto in my house. My husband wants no part of it. Uh, tonight he had two meals from McDonald's, uh, two upside fries, two Big Macs, uh, chicken nuggets, and I had a double Big Mac, no bun, extra pickle, extra lettuce. Um, but he's somebody that could definitely benefit um, from a keto lifestyle and has zero, zero desire to do it. Um, so some people just don't want it um, that could really, really benefit from it. It's, it's difficult to live in a household that I'm the only one that lives that lifestyle. Um, and I'm trying to constantly stay on track and I'm always surrounded by triggers. Um, a lot of my stories, I'll like go down and I'll have a live story happening where I'm showing my husband baking cookies and, and cakes and icing. And then he orders a pizza for everybody. And it's like, I can't have any of it. So, um, I'm constantly, constantly surrounded by triggers all the time and smells. And I can be up in my bedroom minding my own business and then I smell brownies coming up through my vents. And it's like, really? Like this, this makes it really hard. Um, and just to touch on that, like living with people that don't do keto, my, my, my children are too young to enforce that type of lifestyle on them. They need the nutrients that they're getting right now. But um trying to prepare meals for, for everybody differently. Uh, so I just basically have like a basic meal for me and then just build onto it for the family. So if I'm going to have steak, then I'll put a cream cheese and some MCT oil on my Himalayan salt. Um, but I'll make a side of potatoes and vegetables for the family. So you can make it work even when you're the only one in the home doing it um, by just keeping your meals as basic and building to your, to your family meals. And that's a question I get a lot. How do you do it? with a family that doesn't follow the same, same lifestyle. And um, that's probably one of the biggest challenges I have is, is being in a home filled with triggers constantly. I think that's another reason I was fortunate is we avoided that. So seeing the situation that I was in, my wife was like, well, we're, we are doing this. And then it came down to, well, we're not cooking multiple meals. Our kids were old enough. So our youngest is 17, so he was 12 when we started this, and he was old enough. So we're not cooking multiple meals. We're not adding on. We're not keeping it in the house. We went through our pantry. We either threw it away or gave it away. And I know, I know we are the outside from – because I talk to more and more people that, you know, they're the only one in the house or – you know, like the kids don't do it or whatever the case is. So our our oldest don't live here. So they do whatever they want because they're 22 and 21. So they do what they want. Now, my granddaughter who I have, I watch her like three to four days a week. Now she's more of a keto baby. Like we don't 
give her candy when she's here. Like we're completely backwards from grandparents, right? So we don't <laughs> give her the candy. We don't give her McDonald's. I mean, not to say that we haven't stopped and got her French fries or whatever, because she's a baby and it's not going to, you know, she's two and a half. It's not going to kill her. She still has that metabolic flexibility, but she likes eggs and she likes berries and she likes the sugar-free whipped cream and she likes, you know, cheese and chicken nuggets. That's why I make the chicken nuggets that I make for my channel and such, okay. because I want to make sure that she's getting what she needs, at least when she's with us. Now, she eats how she eats and she'd rather have eggs. She'd rather have steak. She would rather have that kind of stuff than other things. Like we'll make her snack bags before she leaves the house. I'll put like moon cheese or um, uh, we've got these uh, Costco sells like these Italian seasoned almonds. And I'll pour. <laughs> she likes all kinds of weird flavors all together too. So <laughs> she'll even dip that in whipped cream. And I'm like, kid, you are so weird. <laughs> <laughs> she's like noms 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 and i'm like okay so you know we make like the the wisps or the whatever cheese crisps we have we have like the everything ones or whatever and we'll just put those in a bag and we'll send them on our way and she's like you made me snack and she runs off wow. or you know i'll give her the juice uh kool-aid makes a zero sugar like juice pouch now hmm, i haven't seen those here so we'll get those for her. I mean, they're not great. I think that I I think it might be sucralose. I don't think it's aspartame, but she's okay with it. It's juice. She likes it. And uh so we we're like completely backwards when it comes to grandparents. So we're not piling her on with candy and sending her home. She usually shows up with candy and I just kind of throw in the trash. <laughs> like she had so I sent her off with a bag of snacks one day and she came back with a bag the same bag of snacks with like these tiny little M&Ms in it. And I'm like, what is going in the trash? Well, I didn't want the M&Ms all over my house, but, <laughs> you know, she doesn't need it. She's not, I mean, she likes candy. She likes chocolate. I mean, she's a kid. We all like that stuff. So you just got to make, you know, she's not going to make good decisions for her. You have to make good decisions for her. And that's the same as like how I look with kids, you know, you know, even when we, you know, even with the keto stuff with the kids, we would still bring home, you know, the little baby carrots and we would still let them have popcorn. Uh, I mean, you know, that's not necessarily the most keto stuff in the world, but it kept them happy and it gave them something. So, you know, they didn't th totally throw us overboard, but <laughs> I mean, because the youngest was mad. Yeah. <laughs> he was mad for months. He's like, what do you mean we can't have this anymore? And I, that was before Halo Top. That was before any kind of like ice cream. I think there was like a so delicious, like coconut, no sugar added kind of like ice cream at the time that was really new. So the difference between then and now I can bring home like five or six loaves of keto bread from Costco and keeps the 17 year old at bay with lunch meat. So he can have his bread and sandwiches and all that stuff. And he's happy. And he's sort of staying on track. I mean, he, you know, he kind of, he's gone off the rails and gained a good amount of the weight back that he lost when we were more strict, but he goes over to his sister's house. And so, I mean, that's real world stuff. It is. Yeah. And I mean, and I really feel for people who live in a house where like the spouse may or may not be supportive, whether or not they want to eat keto, but I can sympathize with him knowing how I felt like six months before I started keto, there was no way I was going to do it. Right. You wouldn't get me. Wouldn't, there's no way You're like what? No, no bread, no pizza. <laughs> You're high. Get out of here. <laughs> not doing that. It's, it's very true. Um, he's supportive. He's supportive in my, in my journey, but just eats what he wants to, wants to eat. Um, I don't even actually have my husband following my keto account. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was curious about that. I was curious because I know that, well, like, because my wife, she doesn't, she does keto with me. She's less strict than me. And she'll go out with her co co-workers or friends and they'll go to wherever and, and she'll stray here and there, you know, like she'll go get Chick-fil-A or whatever. Or sometimes I'll even get it for myself too, you know, but, you know, she does what she does and, but she's, she stays keto because she knows that if she doesn't, then it'd be that much easier for me to go off the rails. 
and she doesn't want to see that. So, so I'm extremely lucky with that. <laughs> you are very, very lucky with that. Um, yeah, no, my husband wants no part of it. <laughs> So that's okay. He, he'll support me from the sidelines. Um, it's just kind of overcoming the triggers within my home. I'm pretty strong about it. Like I, I can get over it. Um, but over the winter months, it, was, it wasn't so easy. But I think there's, like I had said earlier, there was so many factors there between COVID and being a mom and a mom of two and not having daycare and not having schools open and, I work in a field, I go out to claims for a living and I can't even do that right now. So everything is home. Um, and to put it in perspective with like, it's hard because my husband, when I got pregnant with my second daughter, he had to take care of me for that nine months that I was pregnant. He works from home. I went on maternity leave. In Canada, our maternity leave is 12 months or 18 months. You can choose. Um, so I stayed home for 12 months. So we have literally been together every single day, 24 seven since 2018, um, and not apart once, um, cause COVID then hit. So that stretched into the third year. Um, so I think there's like a lot of life factors that have kind of played into me going in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, and, and I might likely go off again next winter and I'll find another excuse as to why I did it next winter. Um, but just trying to focus on the moment and getting myself back to where I want to be in the moment and not worrying about next winter and what's going to happen then. It's just getting myself into that mentality again and refocusing. Hard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this was like the most imperfect, perfect storm that's ever happened. I don't think, I think this is a close to the apocalypse. I think we can come and still walk away from it. So. Yeah. It's, it's hopefully we're on the down slope, I guess. Hopefully, I, at least for you guys, hopefully, you know, they'll open things up sooner rather than later. It'll be nice. It'll be nice to get back to a gym and <laughs> um, even go shopping. You can't even, you can't even go to a store in Ontario right now and buy underwear. Like, it's just, it's a, a surreal world. Um, my girlfriend went to get diapers and wipes the other day from Walmart. You can't even access diapers and wipes at Walmart. They're not considered to be essential. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, that's insanity to me. It, it is. It is. But you can go to a grocery store and buy them. But at Walmart, it's not considered to be uh, an essential. So it's just a really surreal world. And I think that we can use it as an excuse. But I used it as an excuse for a few months. And now I got to stop using it as an excuse to not anywhere. Yeah. I mean, once we get back, so once I get back from Texas, I mean, I plan to stay as on plan as I can be. Um, looking forward to in and out Burger. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, like, I'm good about going to things like weddings and stuff and not eating whatever they have if it's a lot of garbage. And I can, I, like, that's the thing. is like, I'm built, I can fast like to me, I usually don't, but like I can do a good 24, 48 hour fast without even thinking about it or even planning for it. So, and I know a lot of people can't do that. Um, but I'm lucky that I've been able to like work at that because I'll use that. That's how, well, I guess in the, in the early stages, I would use that to help stay on track. So like if I was going to miss dinner and I was going to a show or something when the world was open, I would say, well, I'm not going to eat tonight. And then I'll get up tomorrow and I'll go to work and then I'll eat when I get home. So that was like, you know, an impromptu 48 hour fast or, <clears throat> excuse me, or longer. And I was, that's how I stayed accountable. So if I didn't get to, you know, go to, you know, see the bands play and they get a hot dog or a hamburger or French fries or whatever, because that's what they had. I could just skip it all together and just go home. So yeah, you're the king of fasting. You <laughs> pretty impressive. I don't think I'm doing that long. I'm not doing 21 days again. I <laughs> I mean, I very well might. I say never now, but then I might get some weird like cuz I was able to drop like 40 pounds doing it. So Yeah, you you you're really good with fasting. I don't and know. And I was the primary cook in the house too. I'm yeah. always the primary cook in the house. I don't know how he's doing this. I had no idea. And you did it. You did. It. Okay. Uh, anyway, you're really good at it. Yeah, we went to restaurants. 
<laughs> so it is kind of embarrassing sitting at like Buffalo Wild Wings. Like, and what do you want? Water. <laughs> Yo, you don't have any money, huh? <laughs> so, yeah. That's awesome. You should have, you should have videoed those. <laughs> well, the only reason I never did is because of the music that they always play. Like that's really loud. And yeah. that was, and with YouTube, I mean, I'm not monetized anyway, but I don't want somewhere down the line to have to cut my video apart or something, you know? That's true. So maybe they'll change the laws. I know with shorts, with the YouTube shorts, like anything like 60 seconds and below, that's like the, like the, the cell phone that's long ways there. Uh, they'll play in like a short, like a short bucket. And so I made a couple of those, but I think for those, they're trying to compete with TikTok and with TikTok and Instagram, when you make those kind of, when you make that kind of content, you have a whole bunch of music you can add to it and use and not get in trouble for. Right. And I think YouTube's trying to do that as well. And they've got like 200 record labels on board. Uh, I'm curious to see how that'll work outside of the shorts, if that'll bleed over into the rest of the music, or if they'll just take... Like if you are monetized, will they take a you know a percentage of your monetization? Will they take fifty percent, twenty percent, five percent, or will they want all of it? Because right now, if you use music and and your video, they can take all of your revenue from that video. So it could be you know ten seconds of music and a ten minute video, and they can take all of your all of your monetization for that one video. Wow, I didn't know that. So. That's so I try to avoid it as much as possible. So, yeah, we don't get anything like that in Canada. There is no monetization to TikToks or YouTube or any of that. You can't, no, you can't get monetized. For, and that, I mean, even if you re, even if you make the like the fourth, like it puts over YouTube, it's like a thousand subscribers with uh over 4,000 watch hours in a, in a, in a one year calendar period. Yeah, I don't, I can't for, say, for sure say 100% about YouTube, but I see constantly on TikTok when I'm swiping through Canadians saying that they don't make money on their, their TikTok. We can't in Canada. Um, can't say for sure on YouTube. I would mm -hmm. Well, I, I, think, I think with YouTube you have to because there's a lot of Canadians that I follow on YouTube. So yeah. I would imagine you have to make some kind of money. Well, ask one when you, when you have one on next time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> so i really appreciate you being here we're, we're about an hour perfect i know you've got a lot going on you're busy 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 <laughs> you you know I've, so i appreciate you being here thank you for having me anything you want to anything you want to plug uh no nope, i am good I'll put your uh, Instagram down in the, uh, in the in the comments below, and then you can kind of let them in or know. <laughs> <laughs> You're the gatekeeper, I, I the keeper of the keys. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Justin. I really appreciate uh, you having me on. Thanks so much, and thank you for being such an inspiration to me. And Bye. so awesome. So, any again, <clears throat> if you guys found value in this video. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Thank you.